Hey, welcome to Farm Traveler. You've probably seen this logo before the last time you went to the grocery store. It's supposed to tell consumers that that item is a GMO or it's got ingredients that are from a GMO. Newsflash, that label is very misleading and let me show you why. The term genetically modified organism or GMO is a tad misleading because everything we eat has either been modified by nature or by farmers from long ago. Take carrots for example. Back in the 1600s, most carrots were white, red, or yellow, not orange. It wasn't until Dutch farmers used selective breeding techniques until we had orange carrots. And selective breeding techniques are basically the building blocks of current genetic engineering practices. You take two breeds, you breed them until you get one with the desired characteristics. So basically farmers bred red, white, and yellow carrots until they got orange ones. Same thing has happened with different varieties of food. How else do you think we have a lot of different potatoes and over 7,500 varieties of apples? I think my wife was saving this for later. I hope she won't throw something at me. GMOs are not the issue at hand. The issue consumers have are with varieties of food that have had their genetic makeup altered through modern day genetic engineering practices. A better term to use would be genetically engineered organisms or just GE. Basically, this encompasses all types of varieties of food that have had their genetic material altered using modern day genetic engineering practices. So here's the list of the current genetically engineered crops in the U.S. You've got things like apples, potatoes, field corn and sweet corn, field corn being used for things like livestock feed and corn oil. Then you've got canola, which is used for things like canola oil, soybeans, you know, soy sauce, vegetable oils, summer squash, rainbow papaya, which didn't know what a rainbow papaya looked like until now. Then you have cotton, things like fiber and cottonseed oil. And lastly, sugar beets used for animal feed and even sugar. The traits that those GE crops have. Apples now have non-browning traits where they stay fresher longer. Potatoes have reduced bruising, which helps during transportation. Field corn is insect resistant. Sweet corn is also insect resistant and herbicide tolerant, which helps get rid of weeds. Canola is herbicide tolerant. Soybeans is insect and herbicide resistant. Next, summer squash has been engineered to be disease resistant, as well as rainbow papaya. Cotton is insect resistant as well as herbicide tolerant. And sugar beets is herbicide tolerant as well. And we'll talk about this in a later episode. Time for some genuine cold hard facts on GE crops. GE crops are more efficient in using water and nutrients as compared to regular crops. GE crops can produce natural pesticides to fend off pests and diseases. And GE crops are tested more than any crop in history and are proven to be just as safe and nutritious as non-GE varieties. So trust me, they are completely safe. Different organizations like the USDA and numerous other ones like the World Health Organization have all come to this conclusion. Just check out what the American Medical Association has to say on GE crops. So a lot of the things that have the non-GMO product verified label don't even have any genetically engineered varieties. Let's talk about it. Like we talked about earlier, carrots, every carrot you eat, all the orange ones, have been genetically modified, but there's no genetically engineered varieties on the market. This baby food has a regular non-GMO label on it. The only ingredients on here are carrots and water, but it's got the non-GMO label. All carrots have been genetically modified but there's no genetically engineered crops. So this is true, but it's extremely misleading because it's not what the consumers think. Second thing is this jar of tomatoes and habaneros. So the ingredients are tomatoes, habanero peppers, jalapenos, calcium chloride, and cilantro. And this does actually have the non-GMO product verified label, or project. So like we talked about earlier, there are no genetically engineered varieties of tomatoes, habaneros, peppers, or anything. So this is extremely misleading because these tomatoes and peppers have been genetically modified in the past. Again, another misleading one. Now, if you want an insane one, there is a company that puts not the non-GMO label on sea salt. Let me show you. Okay, it's GMO salt, right? It says non-GMO, verified, you see it? There's no GMO salt. Yes, it's from the Himalayas of Pakistan. There's no GMO salt.
Anyway, the next one is cinnamon. So it's got a regular non-GMO label on it. There are no genetically engineered varieties of cinnamon trees, but those cinnamon trees have been genetically engineered in the past, most likely. So this one again is extremely misleading because there are no genetically engineered varieties, but there are probably some GMO cinnamon trees. All right. This next one is edamame, which is my wife's favorite treat. So this one does have the non-GMO product verified label on it. And the ingredients are soybeans and sea salt. As we know, sea salt's a mineral. It can't be genetically engineered. And soybeans are actually on the list of genetically engineered varieties. So this one is actually true. This is most likely a strain of soybeans that have not been genetically engineered in a lab. But they most likely, definitely, have been genetically engineered sometime in nature. In, even by farmers hundreds of years ago. So. This is true, but it's also extremely misleading. The problem here is twofold. Companies, mainly their advertising firms, need to do a better job of not spreading false information just to help their products sell. And the agriculture industry needs to do a better job of informing the consumers about what exactly goes into their food and how it's made. At the same time, consumers need to do a much better job of fact-checking where they get their information from and not believing all the labels they see. The first step is to not believe the non-GMO product verified label. So moral of the story, don't buy into the non-GMO label. Companies use it just to make their items sell better than their competitors. Consumers see it and think it's healthier than the items that don't have it. So don't buy into that hype, literally. So what do you think? Do you think the label is baloney or do you think it's just? Which I really hope you don't. Anyway, let us know in the comments below what you think and we'll keep this discussion going. Thanks for stopping by Farm Traveler, and we'll see you next time. I almost bit the stem.